issues of life TV. talking about guarding our hearts so we have been doing the guarding our hearts series and we are going to do the concluding part which is putting everything together so we're going to be talking about guarding our hearts against the flesh against the flesh against the human nature because it's the human nature that brings about all the things that we have been talking about envy anger um, sexual immorality division discord so we are going to put it all together under the subject of the flesh so guarding our hearts against the flesh so like I mentioned the flesh is the natural man it's that human nature that nature that wants you to just do things that you feel like doing but you know within yourself that it's not the right thing to do so if you are listening to me and you have not even heard about the word the flesh before every time I mention the flesh in this video it's talking about that human nature just like when a baby you know knows how to bite the, the the mother you know as a sign of why is it taking so long to give me the breast milk so you know that human nature is, is desperately wicked you know the bible says the heart of a man is desperately wicked who can know it so that desperately wicked heart that human nature that's the flesh and so we need to talk about how to guard our hearts against the flesh and this seems very impossible because it is actually impossible without God it's only by the grace of God that we are able to do this so that's where you know at the end of this uh, at, the, at the end of this um, topic we're going to talk about how we can receive the strength from God by giving our life to Jesus Christ so so most of the things I'm talking about is assuming that you have given your life to Jesus Christ and that way you'll be able to tap into the strength that has been provided to us, the grace that has been provided to us through Jesus. So let's get started. So like I mentioned in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21, this has been the scripture for the old God in our art series. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition. So all of this are the acts of the flesh, the hearts of the human nature, the hearts of that natural man that we are born with, the Adamic nature. So these are all the acts of it. And the consequences of living in this act is us not being able to inherit the kingdom of God also not being able to to make it to heaven so many people will give their life to jesus and yet when they're still working in this act then they still miss out on getting to heaven because of this act of the flesh so this flesh must die we need to kill the flesh we need to crucify the flesh we need to guard our hearts against the flesh so the first thing we need to do on how to guard our heart against the flesh is we need to work the opposite which is work in the spirit walk in the spirit act in according to the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh so like i mentioned earlier this is only applicable to someone that have given their life to jesus because it's only when you are born again that the holy spirit will come inside of you that will not be able to guide you if you yield to that holy spirit so we need to walk in the spirit because you cannot do two together you cannot walk in the spirit and walk in the flesh you have to either choose one or the other so when the flesh is trying to come in we have to choose to walk in the spirit and according to galatians 5 16 to 18 it says so i say walk by the spirit so we allow the spirit to guide us and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desire what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want but you for but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law so that's verse 18 so we can see here that the flesh and the spirit are always conflicting to, to one another and that's when you sometimes you hear two voices telling you oh 
do this and you're like no 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 no, i don't think that's the right thing to do but then if you do what you want because sometimes the flesh satisfies your cravings the flesh the natural man satisfy your cravings of mm, i just want to get back to that person i just want to i just want to make them feel what i feel i, I don't want to forgive I want to hurt them. That's the, the feeling, satisfying that cravings of vengeance. But the Spirit of God will tell you, no, you shouldn't, because vengeance belongs to God. God says you should forgive so that if you forgive, so that you can also receive God's forgiveness. Remember that you yourself, you were a sinner before Jesus came and died for you. So you need to pay the debt of, of, of that person by forgiving them. So you see, the Spirit and the flesh are constantly fighting. So we have to make a decision to walk in the Spirit. The more we walk in the spirit live in the spirit we'll be able to desensitize ourselves to the flesh we will not be able to get sensitive to the flesh we will not be able to gratify the desires of the flesh for we what we can't work in the spirit and work in the flesh at the same time so we must choose to work in the spirit but how you might be listening to me how do i work in the spirit by ensuring that our life is exhibiting the fruits of the spirit just like there is you know acts of the flesh there are also fruits of the spirit so we must make sure that our life is exhibiting the fruits of the of the spirit so every action should lead to the fruit of the spirit every action should be based on the fruit of the spirit they should they should portray the fruit of the of the spirit so every action that we take every thought because the action comes from the thoughts because we are guarding our hearts we are starting early here we are getting making sure that our heart is actually guarded against the the, the acts of the flesh so that what comes out will now be the things of the spirit so we so we need to make sure that every action every thought that we have it's backed up by the fruit of the of the spirit every thought should be based on the fruit of the spirit so we ask ourselves is what I'm thinking about, is it showing love? Because we know that the fruit of the Spirit says love. So the fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 23 to 26, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So these are the fruit of the Spirit. So we know that the fruit of the Spirit, must everything that we do, the thoughts that we have, should be based on this. So we ask ourselves, which aspect of the fruit of the Spirit does this action of thought support it? So we'll be able to decide, okay, this is definitely how I'm supposed to work. If this is so satisfying, is fulfilling the fruit of the Spirit, then we know that, okay, then this is working in the Spirit. So this is working in the Spirit. The, the umbrella of it all is love. We know that love, according to the word of God in the, in the book of Corinthians, talks about love is kind, love is patient. You know, love does not envy. So when we know that we are working in the spirit and it's supported by love, because you may be asking, how do I work in the spirit? Is whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're doing, is it backed up with love? And I'm not talking about selfish love. I'm talking about love from God, the pure love, the divine love. And this kind of love can only be experienced when we have given our life to Jesus. Because we cannot give what we don't have. We have to first accept the love of God for us to be able to show the love of God. So, okay. So I, I think that it, it seems clear. So working in the spirit and not fulfilling these desires of the flesh is starving the flesh. By not answering to the flesh. I don't know if you have had someone in your life whereby you just, you know, you, you're trying to check up on them, check up on them, check up on them, call them, and it seems to be ignoring you. At a point, you just like, you know what, maybe this person doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So there's the same thing with the flesh. The more we ignore the flesh, the, 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 the more the flesh will die and then it becomes desensitized. If the flesh is telling you, oh, why don't you do that? Oh, why don't you just get angry? Why would the person talk to you like that? You need to defend yourself. I'm like, no, 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 no. No. Blessed are the peacemaker for they are children of God. I am a peacemaker for the spirit of God says that. So I'm just going to let peace reign. And then the, the, the flesh comes to you. Oh, oh, did you see the way she just talked to you? Can you just imagine how she just, you know, put you down as if you don't know, how, you, you are, you're stupid or something. I'm like, oh, well, well that's okay. Well, the Bible says, you know, I should love my neighbor as myself. So, you know, I forgive for they might not know what they are doing. So the more you are constantly resisting the voice of the flesh, the flesh will continue to die. So work in the spirit. You know, when we talk about, you know, being righteous, righteous conscious is better than trying to be sin conscious. Oh, I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. But when you just choose one or just 
live a life of holiness and just wanting to please God. So you choose to walk in the spirit and that's the opposite of walking in the flesh. So walking in the spirit, the more we walk in the spirit, the more we'll be able to resist and guard our hearts against the flesh. So when we ignore our yes to the suggestions of the flesh, we are doing that by walking in the spirit. So we just choose to do the opposite by walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. So the second thing we need to do is we must watch and pray so that we do not fall into temptation. Because, you know, many times we, have, we, have, we, might, have, you know, we might listen to this and be like, yes, I just want to do this. I want to please God. I want to live a life of holiness. But, you know, it's, it's not by power. It's not by mind. It's by the Spirit of God. And then for us to be able to commune with the Spirit, we pray, we ask God. We come to God and say, God, I need your help. Help me, Lord. I want to please you. Even Jesus had to pray. Jesus had to pray. He had to go on 40 days and, on 40 days of fasting and prayer before the, him fulfilling his ministry. So the same way, we need to watch and pray. The Bible says in Matthew 26 verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. It's when you want to pray that the flesh will tell you, oh, just sleep. Like, just get some sleep. You know, that's the works of the flesh. That's the act of the flesh. Because the, the flesh is always like, it's the enemy of the spirit. The number one enemy that we, we don't really talk about most times, we always look at the devil, is actually the flesh. Like, you know, like um, one of my pastors mentioned, we are carrying the Antichrist with us all the time. And that Antichrist is the flesh because it's always against what God wants us to do. So we need to kill that flesh. So we need to pray. We need to watch and pray. We need to be watchful and prayerful. We need to fast as well. We need to fast and also deny the flesh of the things that it craves for. Because I, I don't know if that happens to you. When I'm fasting, I'm 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 calm in my I'm no I'm calm. I'm able to subdue that flesh. My response are always kind of different. But when I'm full of food and eating and watching this and watching that, the spirit is silence. So we need to subdue, you know, the flesh by being watchful, being prayerful, fasting. The body is weak to resist the temptation of the flesh or that of the devil. So we must strengthen our inner man. We must strengthen the spirit man. We must strengthen it. You know, when we give our life to Jesus, you know, it's our spirit that is regenerated. And for us to be strengthening in the spirit, we need to be rooted in Christ. And this is in Ephesians 3, 16 to 17, Amplified Version. It says, it grants you out of riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you have been being deeply rooted and securely grounded in love so we need to be spiritually energized and to be spiritually energized to charge our spiritual battery is praying fasting and just being watchful and prayerful so that we do not fall into temptation so that so that the flesh you know we can subdue the flesh and the spirit can arise so that's one of the ways for us to be able to guard our hearts against the flesh. The spirit, for the spirit to be able to resist the temptation of following after the flesh, we need to train ourselves to resist, control, and subdue the flesh, even by fasting, like I mentioned, denying the flesh of what it wants and needs. No wonder Jesus said, if any man will want to be my disciple, he must deny himself, the flesh, the natural man, the human nature, and follow me, so that all that will be left will be the spirit. For we can only serve God in spirit and in truth, not in our flesh, not in our human nature. And this we can see when Jesus told us that we need to deny ourselves in Matthew 16, 24 to 26 in the Amplified Version. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interest. The human nature is always selfish. And take up his cross expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me believing in me conforming to my example in living if need be suffering 
or perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose the true death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it. That is, life with me for all eternity. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, the wealth, the fame, the success, but forfeit his soul? Or what will it profit a man to gain? What would, or what would a man get, give in exchange for his soul? Matthew 16, 24 to 26, Amplified Version. So this summarizes it all. The need for us to be watchful and prayerful. The need for us to deny ourselves. Deny the flesh of what it's asking for. For our spirit mind to be strengthened. To carry our cross daily. And follow Jesus, whatever it will cost. This is how we can guard our hearts against the flesh. Because then we don't even care what the flesh has to offer. And then, the third thing that we need to do is we, need, we must feed on the word of God. For the Bible says, For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh from the Lord. You know, I was, I've just been reading the book of Deuteronomy, and it was that part where I saw that scripture that says, you know, God intentionally made manna to rain from the bed and from, from heaven because he wanted them to be hungry so that they can rely on God and realize that man must cannot live by, by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Lord. Ah, that's actually in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. So I'm just going to actually read the scripture. It says, So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that it might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So our spiritual man needs food. And that food is the word of God. That's the only way we can be energized, spiritually energized. That's the only way we can, we can, we can strengthen the spirit so that we, the spirit can be able to lead us in walking in the spirit. It's whatever we feed that will grow. So if we are feeding the spirit with the word of God, the spirit will begin to grow more and more. But if we are feeding the flesh with its desires, then the flesh will take root. So it is important for us to feed on the word of God, not just on Sundays, not just when we are at church. Every day, just like we eat physical food so that we can have energy for this body. But we need to take more of care of the, in, in, the inner mind, the spiritual body, the body that has been regenerated by the works that was done on the cross. Assuming that, you know, we have given our life to Jesus. So it is important for us to feed on the word of God. For we, it is important for us to read the word of God, to meditate upon it. It is so crucial for us to be able to guard our hearts against the flesh. It is impossible for us to guard our hearts against the flesh if we don't have the word of God inside of us. Because it's by the word of God that we'll be able to know, you know, they will say decipher, which is the will of God and which is not the will of God. So that we are not deceived, we need to know the truth so that the truth can make us free. And the truth is the word of God. And also, Jesus also used the same scripture. Jesus referred to the scripture in Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus replied, it is written and forever remains written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And this was when Jesus... The devil was trying to tempt Jesus. After Jesus has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The flesh, you know, was trying to come in. The devil was trying to, you know, the devil used the flesh as his agent to bring about temptation. So the senses of the flesh, the hunger, the cravings, the food, and all sort of things, you know, it were fully at last when it comes to, you know, 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. He was written in the Bible. Jesus was hungry. And the devil came and said, oh, turn this stone to bread. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. Man shall not live. It is written. How did Jesus know it is written? Because he knew the word of God. 
He started the word of God. So the only way we can also counterfeit the subjections of the flesh is by studying the word of God. Because that's the only way we can be able to say, no, 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 no. Because, you know, the devil even used the word of God to try to tempt Jesus. You know, come in a very deceptive way. But Jesus, being the word himself, knew how to respond. And we, as his followers, we need to study the word and show ourselves approved. When we store, the, 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 store in our hearts the word of God, we will have no choice but to satisfy the spirits and resist the flesh. For our mind will be renewed, that we will not be able to conform to the pattern of this word. And this is written in Romans 12 verse 2, the Amplified Version. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and custom, but be transformed and progressively change as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, perfect in its plan and purpose for you. The only way we can prove for ourselves what is the will of God is by renewing our mind by the word of God. Because the word of God is the will of God. Right from Genesis to the end, it's all about God, what God wanted. And the consequences of us disobeying what God wanted. So when we study the word of God, we'll be able to know what the will of God is. We'll be able to know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for our life. You want to know your purpose? Study the word of God. You want to know why are you on this earth? Study the word of God. It will be very clear to you. So it is important for us. For the flesh is always wanting to conform to the pattern of this word. We have to stop the flesh by feeding on the word of God and resist to feed the flesh with its desires. And what are the desires of the flesh? The lust of the eyes, the pride of life. So 1 John 2, 16 to 17 Amplified Version. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust and sexual cravings of the flesh, and the lust and longing of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, which is the pretentious confidence in one's resources or the stability of heavenly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. And the verse 17 says, The Lord is the, the world is passing away, and with its lust, the shameful pursuits and ungodly longings, but the one who does the will of God and carries out his troubles lives forever. So by storing on the word of God, that means there is more of God in us. For the word of God is God himself. And the flesh is always after the lust of this world. The lust of, 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 the, of the things we can see, the pride of life. So it is important for us to starve it by studying on the word of God. For God, the word of God is God himself. As we know in John 1, 1 to 5, and it says in the beginning was the world. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. So when we study on the word of God, there is more of God in us. Meaning there is light in us. And then the darkness, the works of the flesh will be able to be put out. So where there is more of God in us, there is light in us. Then darkness, the flesh, the evil will have no choice but to be subdued and died. For the word of God is light. And Jesus who will then overpower that darkness. So how can we even live a life of purity? You know, that was a question that David asked in Psalm 119, 9 to 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? But by keeping watch on himself according to your word, conforming his life to your precepts, to your word. With all my heart, I have sought you, inquiring of you and longing for you. Do not let me wander from your commandments, neither, neither through ignorance nor by my willful disobedience. Your word have I treasured and stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. So it is important for us to feed on the word of God, store the word of God in our heart so that we will not sin against God, so that we can guard our heart against the acts of the flesh. We store up the word of God. The word of God is the sword that will kill that flesh. It is the sword that will kill that human nature, that evil nature in us. It is that sword. And then finally, we need to be set apart for God. We need to be set apart for God. That's ways, that's one of another way for us to be able to 
overcome, guard our hearts against the flesh. Making up our mind to be God's special possession and realizing that this is of a higher calling. Romans 12 verse 1, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, only and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Our act of worship to God is to give ourselves to him and be set apart for him. And when we are set apart for the Lord, we, then we'll be able to, to, to not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Because we know our life is not our own. And the first Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession. So you may proclaim the excellency. The wonderful deeds and virtues and perfection of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous lights. Once you were not a people, that's verse 10, once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Verse 11, beloved, I urge you as aliens, as strangers in this world to abstain from sexual urges. So we see here that we are aliens in this world, so we cannot act in the flesh. It's only those that are of this world that will act in the flesh. So we are aliens, we are strangers in this world, as children of God, set apart for him, born again, given our, already given our life to Jesus. We are aliens, as strangers in this world, so we cannot live according to the flesh. Our home is in heaven, and in heaven it's spirit. Spirit is what com commune with spirit. So we cannot allow the flesh to come and rule our body. So, um, um, for you that are listening to me, and you have not given your life to Jesus, this is a call to salvation. A call to be set apart and be different for the Lord. It is not just a call that because you, you, are, you, know, you have God, you can call on God, give me this, give me that. No, this is a call to be set apart. A call to be God's special possession. A call to serve God truly with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. A call to resist sin, whatever it costs. And to make a dedicated decision to serve God alone. 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 Only Him alone. Not our own motive. Not our the flesh. No. To serve God alone. A call to live for God and not for yourself. Even per adventure, you might have given your life to Jesus. Maybe you took it back. You took back your life from the Lord and said, okay, God, I just want to do my own thing. It is not too late for you to rededicate your life to Jesus, to surrender all to him and yield to this call of complete surrendering to him as your Lord and Savior. And to do that is just to say this by faith. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins, for I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have, I, have, I have gone according to my own will, according to the flesh, according to the human nature for so many times. But now I am here to you to surrender to you completely as you being my Lord and Savior. Wash me by your blood. Please write my name in the book of life. I want to live for you. I want to walk in the spirit. In the spirit. I do not want to fulfill the desires of the flesh any longer. Help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name, I have prayed. Amen. I believe by faith, with that confession, you are now born again. You're on your journey to get into heaven. And take as many with you. So tell someone about Jesus as well. God bless you. Find yourself in Bible Believing Church where you can be fed with the word of God and also have your own personal, you know, altar with the Lord in which you study the word of God, pray, and commune with your Father in heaven. So, that will be all for today. Let's continue on in guarding our heart against the art of flesh so that we can inherit the kingdom of today. God bless you. Don't forget to share, like, and comment. Love your heart. Love your heart. Love your heart. For how to beat all the issues of life.